In this video, we're going to introduce loops in Python, and in particular, definite loops. So one type of loop in Python is known as a for loop, and like other loops, it allows us to repeat one or more statements. So here's an example of a for loop, and you can see that these two lines, these two print statements, are indented under this for line. That's the header of the loop. And in this case, we're going to end up repeating those two indented lines three times. And so we end up with the output that you see here in blue. Those indented lines are known as the body of the loop, and anything that's in the body will get repeated the appropriate number of times. Now how do we figure that out, how many times we're going to repeat? Well, here's the general syntax for a for loop. After the keyword for, we're going to have some variable, which is the loop variable, we then have the keyword in. We then have some type of sequence. So in our example, our sequence was a list, but it could also be a string or some other type of sequence. Then we have a colon. And then we have the body of the loop, which, as we said, has to be indented underneath the loop header. And what ends up happening is what you see in this flowchart here. So we repeatedly ask, are there additional things in the sequence that we haven't yet processed? If so, if there's at least one thing in the sequence that hasn't been processed yet, we're going to assign that next value in the sequence to our loop variable. We're then going to execute the statements in the body, and then we're going to go back and check if there are more values. And we're going to keep doing that until there are no more values left in the sequence yet to be processed, at which point we will go and execute whatever statement comes after the loop. And so the number of elements in the sequence is going to govern the number of repetitions that we get when we execute the loop. Let's go into more detail for this particular example, and we're going to use a table to keep track of what's going on. I've also added one extra print statement here, and you'll notice it's not indented, so it's not part of the loop. So in this case, what we repeatedly ask ourselves is whether the sequence 1, 2, 3 has any more values that have yet to be processed. So initially, it does, and we take the first value in the sequence, which is the 1, and we assign it to the variable i. We then execute the body, which in this case is printing the string warning, and then printing the current value of i. And that's why we get warning 1, we then loop back to the top of the statement and say, are there any more values in the sequence? And there are. So we assign the next value, which is 2, to the loop variable i. So I'm putting that in my table. We then execute the body for that value of i, and so we get warning 2. We go back. There's one more value. We assign it to the variable i. So 3 is the, now, is the new value of i. We then execute the body and get warning 3. We go back one more time and double check, and there's no more values. So we go to the statement that comes after, which in this case is that final print statement. And so it then gets executed. Now, if all you care about is repeating statements n times for some number n, the easiest way to do that is to use range n as your sequence. Because if you remember, range n essentially gives you a list of integers from 0 up to n minus 1. And so the number of values in that list is n. There are n values, and therefore you will get n repetitions. So for example, if I have this loop, because I have range 3, that's equivalent to the list 0, 1, 2. And so I will end up printing, I'm feeling loopy, three times. If I change range 3 to range 5, because that's equivalent to this list from 0 to 4, which has 5 values in it, I'm going to end up printing the string 5 times. Now, for loops are known as definite loops. A definite loop is a loop in which we know ahead of time, before the loop even begins, how many repetitions we're going to get. So it's a fixed number of repetitions. As we said earlier, in the case of a for loop, the number of repetitions is going to be the length of whatever sequence you specify in the loop header. Later in the semester, we'll see indefinite loops in which we don't know ahead of time 
how many repetitions are going to occur.